My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh, my God. Thank we you. Why don't we just call that as the end of the show? Hey, it's Jackie Cation, and uh, this is a dork addendum, an add-on to the Dork Forest. Regular Dork Forest, of course. Dorkforest.com, thedorkforest.com, familypetancestry.com brings you to my website, JackieCation.com. Anyway, the dork addendums, I read old emails and comments, and I talk about what my dorkdom is. It's about 15 minutes, and let's get into it. Patrick Brady, who fixes the audio on the regular show, does not fix the audio, so if there's any sort of audio problems, it's my fault. Jackie Cation. Jackie at JackieCation.com to vent uh, your rage at this free thing. Please do. Knock yourselves out. Okay, so what did I do, Dorky, this week? I went to the Marvel Experience. That's right. The Marvel Experience in Phoenix, Arizona for New Year's Eve. It was it's essentially like a beta Disney ride, as far as I can tell, where here's the ad for it, okay? Now it's your turn to save the world. Now you can join forces with Marvel's mightiest heroes on a mission to save the planet at S.H.I.E.L.D.'s newest recruit, You'll swing with Spider-Man, smash with Hulk, fly with Iron Man in a next generation of hyper-reality. And your adventure will take you through seven colossal domes as you train for a climactic battle against Hydra and its ar army of evil adaptoids. Along the way, you'll experience the world's only 360-degree 3D stereoscopic theater and a state-of-the-art 4D motion ride. 4D? I don't even know what that means. What does that mean? I don't know. All right, well... Someone email me. Tell me what they think it means. Because here's what happened. Uh, we go, we go to the Marvel ride. It was me, Andy Ashcraft, my loved one, uh, Steve Mandel, who, uh, has been on the program and Chris Winslow, who will be on the program speaking to golf, I assume at one point or any number of things. He also told me he could do an hour on Obamacare because he works for, uh, an insurance company called United. Healthcare. Anyway, uh, I don't want, I don't want that show. I don't want the Obamacare show. Not unless he's super excited about it. Uh, but we all got, um, these charm bracelets, like plastic charm bracelets that you snap things into. And it was, it was really fun. It's a ride that is, it's essentially, it's essentially a ride at Disneyland that isn't done. And it was $27 to get in, and it was pretty awesome. So you go in, there's a lot of people who are earnest and want you to have a good time, and there are some people that are earnest but don't know what they're doing. And then the lines are sort of a mishmash. But you go through, we did the Iron Man ride, where it was one of those rides, kind of like the Wii, where you stand in front of it and they have to calibrate your uh, your body so that you can, you're not actually standing in an Iron Man suit. That'd be kind of awesome. Disney, if you're listening. Uh, but essentially, you're standing in a circle, and then you lean, and then you do sort of a pod racing thing where where you crash into walls more often than not. But you could fire with your hand. Like, it recognizes your hand as a repulsor. And it's like that. The Hulk game, a lot like that, where uh, it recognizes you. You could also do a thing where you interact with a camera, and if you do different things on the screen in front of you, shows up the character that you've summoned. Like you can summon the Hulk by making your making a muscle. You can summon Captain America by saluting. It was really it was more fun to watch that than to actually do it. I I didn't care. It was cute to see the little kids summon Captain America and Spider Man and whatever. And then the one we did do that was kind of the funnest thing was we went on Black Widow's uh sneaky thing. I don't know what it's, it was called an analysis. Uh, I don't know what it was called. It doesn't matter. Anyway, but you remember, you know, the lasers that uh, spies have to go through to steal the jewelry or super spies and super thieves. We got to go through those and essentially trip those, tri trip those laser beams. And that was really fun. And then there was a couple of movies and then there was some interactive stuff. It's going to be really, really cool when it is done. It is not done, but it was still pretty fun. I found it to be super fun, but I think we spent probably two and a half hours there and we didn't do everything and the lines were kind of long and it wasn't really run with the sort of the precision that 
that Disney is known for. Like when you go to a Disneyland or a Disney World, you get in line, you snake around in that line for probably an hour and 15 minutes, and you are entertained at every moment in those, in the, in that hour 15. And they're, they're working on it. They just haven't written everything and they haven't figured all the, all the stuff out. So that is that. That was the, that was the only dorky thing I did. And then of course, uh, reading a lot of comic books. Uh, really liking Captain Captain Marvel, really liking a thousand different comic books. So it was fun to go to the Marvel experience, and uh, I bought a Captain America t-shirt. So that's that. Why don't we do the actual emails, which I have to catch up. I have to catch up with these damn emails. We're still in 2012, and uh, that's great. I want to get to all of them. But I do respond to the emails. When you email me, Jackie at JackieCation.com, I respond to you, but I never, ever read them. So I think it would be nice to read them. There it is. Okay, so that was the last one I read was from John the Ronzo. So this time it's Peter O'Shea. Hello, Peter O'Shea. Hi, I just watched your... This is from October of 2012. <laughs> Uh, hi, I just watched your Comedy Central special, and I think you're freaking hilarious. You remind me of Kathleen Madigan, but with a twist. That twist being, I am not Kathleen Madigan. But thank you very much, because that is very funny. Um, I'm now going to your schedule, a part of your web page, to see if you're coming to the Boston area anytime soon. I think I did come since 2012, but it is a rare thing to play in Boston. I like Boston. I just, I never do get to play it. So, that's the way that goes. But... Um, thank you, Peter O'Shea, for that email. I've received an email uh, also in October from Melissa. Dear Jackie, do you have a mailing list? I'd love to be added and receive updates on your tour schedule. I just heard you on the new comedy radio station in Austin and love your stuff. That was 2012. That new radio station has already gone out of business, but that guy's opened up another one. That Austin, it, I think it was called I Heart Radio or I Heart. Yeah, I think it was iHeartRadio or iHeartComedy, 24-7 comedy. And he played the heck out of my albums. So I uh, love Austin, Texas. And yes, Melissa, I do. I do have uh, a mailing list. And you can you can join it at JackieCation.com and you will get an email, a personal email from me every two to four months. And because I don't send them out that often, but I'm on Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff. Okay, Jay Becker writes, also in August, Hi Jackie, we've spoken a few times via emails. I want to thank you for coming to Indiana and apologize that my wife and I won't be able to make it. I'm plugging your show via Facebook in real life. Please keep coming to Indiana and I'll make it to a show. Well, Jay Becker, uh, thank you, Bloomington, Indiana. I know I uh, I love that room. I haven't been back in a little bit, but uh, but I, I appreciate you plugging it in real life as well as on your own Facebook page. That's neat. Mike Meisner writes again, quiet Mike. Uh, wow, my mind, we have no idea. I have no idea what episode this is. He said this October 4th, 2012. So go back in time, figure out which episode he's talking about because he doesn't reference. Oh, he does. He does reference. It was the Wizard of Oz episode with the Love Master. Wow, my mind is blown. What a dork. I mean that as a compliment. I am the same age and impressed and a little jealous that he acted on his childhood dorkdom. Fascinating stuff. Gotta find the jitterbug scene. I always thought there was more to that flying monkey sequence. The Wizard of Oz is top shelf. Quiet Mike. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Okay, a guy named Dave wrote in October, you were on this morning's Bob and Tom. You're very cute. Well, thank you, D. Weston Moore, from October of 2012. I'm glad you thought so. Kenneth McLaren uh, hello, Jackie. This is your North Carolina stalker again. You really shouldn't call yourself that, Kenneth. Uh, cause it, it's not, I mean, I get it. You're kidding. Cause, uh, everybody gets a pass. I assume you're not stalking. Okay. But, uh, I very much enjoyed you yesterday on Bob and Tom. Oh, I seriously must have gotten several emails about this. I always send them a VIP email to let them know how much I enjoy hearing you. I've gotten so many comments on my dork t-shirt, at least in certain places. I was at the pharmacy one day, and the pharmacist was trying to name all the references on it. Oh, it must be a ranger shirt. I get most of them. I guess I'm a nerd. A truck-driving nerd. <laughs> well, just wanted to say hello and let you know that I'm still, quote, stalking you. And you have a great day, and get down here to North Carolina one day. By the way, uh, there you go. That is great. Kenneth, I 
think I've been in I think I've been to North Carolina now since 2012. That's the problem with this stuff. Eventually I'll get to 2015, you guys. From Karen, enjoyed listening to you on Bob and Tom this morning. You mentioned a book you said was the adult equivalent of the Hunger Games. What was the name of that book? Well, Karen, let me tell you uh, at yahoo.com that it, that book is uh, Ready Player One. There is now um, a Goodreads Ranger of the Dork Forest reading group on Goodreads, and they read uh, that book, Ready Player One. And so you could join that group. It, it spawned off of the Facebook Ranger page, Dork Forest Rangers on Facebook, if you want to join that group. It's just a bunch of people who listen to the show kind of talking at each other about their own dorkdoms and the episodes. So <clears throat> Diane Camber of Seattle writes, on October 6th, 2012, you mentioned on your podcast that you would like a short list of favorite TV channels. Oh, that was when I wanted, like, it wouldn't be great to pick and choose with cable. I had the same wish to just see 10 channels I wanted to watch, and I was able to use the parental to clo- controls to fine-tune my list of channels. Oh, that's awesome. Good work, Diane in Seattle. The default code for the Dish Network. I don't know if that's still true. Anyway, so good work, Diane. Uh, Constance, greetings, Jackie. On Friday night, Kathleen Madigan had a show here in Fargo, North Dakota, October 7th, 2012. At the Fargo Theater. She was hilarious, of course, and put on a great show. I was lucky enough to get to meet her after the show. I told her I love to listen to that episode of The Dork Forest with her, yourself, and Lori Kilmartin delving into the Kennedy family. She immediately said I was the first person to ever reference that to her and said she had a great time and would love to do it again. Representing The Dork Forest. Well played. Uh, well done, Constance. Thanks for that. I should get her back on, but I know she travels a lot, so... You know, what are you going to do? Oh, Fada. Fada from, uh, from Portland. He, 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 he's always a helper too. Whenever I go to, um, Portland, he always wants to help me find a good dork for the live dork for us, which is awesome. And that is what those, see, those uh, emails are about. This one's from Lauren, also October. Thanks so much for the laugh. So I had the Ice House a couple of months back. Ice House is in Los Angeles. And again, last night for the LA Pod Fest. Both nights, you were phenomenal. Downloading Dork Forest as I write this. Sorry, I never checked it before. Thank you again. Sincerely, Lauren Fig. Well, Lauren, I hope that you are still listening after December 17th, 2012. I'm doing the New York Comedy Festival, New York Podcast Festival this weekend. And I don't know where you live, but you should come if you get. And that is great. Oh, also the end of uh, sort of the middle of of October from Cat. FYI, Portlanders could use some tough love about their pets, but they are totally insane about them. We have a friend who hand feeds her cat twice a day, never mind the medications, and he is considered normal. Another friend (laughs) has her dog on Prozac for years. Be careful on Friday. Everyone in Portland has been very nice to me about my pet-related items, and they know that they are silly and that I do indeed love animals. So we have made peace, me and the people of Portlandia. Uh, Heidi Young writes on the 17th of October 2012, I just wanted to tell you I'm so excited that you're coming to Reno. I haven't been to Reno since. I did. I do like Reno, weirdly enough. Some people make fun of Reno. I do not. I like Reno. I am bringing a group of friends to your Friday show. Wish I could go to all the shows, but since I live and work out of town, that's a no-go. Just wanted to extend that if you need good food, suggestions, or things to do, let me know. I'll point you in the right direction. We have hidden gems no one thinks about when they're here. Hopefully, I'll get to meet you after your show. Fellow dork, Heidi. Oh, I hope I took advantage of that. God knows. Uh, Katriana from Portland. Um, there we go. Oh, this is the woman who suggested about, uh, about the, the tough love about their pets and the hand feeding of the cat. Katriana cat writes back to say, got our tickets last night. Looking forward to it. Uh, Portland comedy crowds tend to roll with it. So it'll be fine. All right. You are correct. I want, I kind of want to finish October. Do I think I can? Yes. We are at 14 minutes. Let's do it. Bronson Klein. Hi, as an overworked, overfueled by coffee and dorky college student, I would like to say thank you for the hours of enjoyment and laughs. I work at research greenhouses on my college campuses, so college campus, so I have a lot of time to listen to podcasts as I water all the plants. 
I donated to you this morning and missed the note section of the process. I was hoping to get hooked up with a Ranger of the Dork Forest patch since I donated at the $5 level. Living in Colorado, I go hiking a lot, so I was going to put a patch on my day pack to make me the hippest kid in the woods. Thanks again for the podcast. Peace and love, Bronson. Well, it looks like I responded to you, and I think in December 22nd, 2012, I had patches, and so hopefully I sent that to you, because I'm out of patches now. Uh, currently, uh, the the trinket level is stickers. Everyone's getting spooky rating girl stickers, and uh, I hope, and green mana. So I hope you're liking that. And $5, that is very nice, actually. I, I don't mind that. Uh, I appreciate all donations to the Dork Forest, and college kid, five bucks uh, seems like you must really like it. So... Kenneth Coker writes on October 22nd, 2012, is there any way to get an autographed photo of you sent to me? Kenneth Coker, Dresden, Tennessee. Nope. No, there isn't. Uh, first of all, nobody prints them anymore. It's all digital. But if you print one out and I'm anywhere in Tennessee, I will sign it. I'm coming to Nashville. I'm opening for Maria next year, this year, 2015. So Kenneth, if you're still listening, print something and I'll sign it. I'll sign anything, really. A toddler. Uh, just come to the show. You're good. Krista. Krista writes, I just wanted to say you're awesome. I first saw you perform on a comedy show hosted by Greg Proops. Well, that was a hell of a show. I'm glad you like me. One Night Stand, I believe? No. It's called Friday Night Videos, I believe, is the show you're thinking of. I liked your material, but you got the most points for referencing Final Fantasy Legend in your routine. That seemed forever ago. Oh, and that joke is from forever ago. Well played, Krista. I am 26 of age, 26 years of age presently. This is from October of 2012 as well. And it was, in fact, before before being a dork was kind of cool. However young I was at the time, seeing you perform for the first time, it was especially awesome to see a legitimately funny dork female comedian. It was sort of rare in those days. Ah, those days, back in those days, for women in pop culture to be out of the dork closet, so it stuck with me. Much later, I discovered your podcast, which is consistently entertaining. I appreciate having a representative of our kind out there that is as awesome as you are. Keep on dorking on. Thank you, <laughs> Krista. That's awesome. Krista Hate. Uh, plus two sort of valor was the is the subject line, which is hilarious and awesome. Uh, Richard Rosso, I can't believe you said on your last podcast that a limo is just a long car. That's probably because you haven't been in mine. I don't own them, but these are the ones I drive. And then he sent me a link. We're usually busy on Saturday, but if you can make it to Santa Maria or where I live in Lompoc on a Sunday, I'll give you a ride. You, your husband, Maria Bamford, uh, anyone. <laughs> that is very nice. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Um, if I ever make it up there, that might be a thing. So regarding Dune, Brian White Wright has written from uh, December 26th. Thanks so much. I've been doing a little research about the other Dune books, and I have a feeling I'll most likely stick with the original Dune book. I'm about 120 pages in, and it's great. Better than Game of Thrones. Oh, oh, I agree. I agree with that statement. Uh, I'm going to be in the States this winter, so I'm going to look for that book, Ready Player One, that you've been talking about. You've really sold me. The sizzle on that one. Thanks again, Brian. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. I hope you enjoyed all of those books because that was from December 26th, uh, October 26, 2012. Allison Whipple, Dork Forest 123. After spending most of the year unemployed, I now have a job that, while uninspiring and unfulfilling, is allowing me to eat and pay back my student loans. So I'm trying to be grateful. Well, good for you, Allison. I've never been much of a podcast person, but since taking this job, the Dork Forest has been my primary listening material to stave off the tedium. I was listening to episode 123 this past Friday, where you mentioned the most disgusting romance novel you've ever read. While I don't doubt that it could be horrible, I can assure you there's far more vile romance novels out there which much with much worse writing. In fact, I spent a year working at a horrible smut publisher where I was an editor and read some truly heinous manuscripts, both in terms of content and in writing quality. In fact, I'd probably beg you to do a Skype show with me, except it's not my dorkdom. That's just how I made money for a year before quitting to take on a temp job. <laughs> and I'm, if I did, my former employee, employer would find out and sue me. Though I highly, highly doubt they listened to The Dork Forest. Well, me too. Anyway, it goes on for a little bit. Nice work. Um, Allison, that was a hilarious letter. I might leave it at that and we'll just do the end of we'll do the end of October 
in the next Dork Addendum. You've been listening to Dork Addendum 7. This is Jackie Cation. See you later.